Clear skies, low tides, the perfect time for a stroll on the South Fort coast. Until the golden sands turn into this, a super sticky pace that'll grab hold of your feet. What's worse, if you're Paul Haskett and you come up to a channel where the only way to get to the other side is to go through it. Big mistake. You've waded into sinking mud. You're stuck and you can't get out. The ground seems to, to swallow you up. The, the sand and the mud all, all wraps around your feet and you, you just can't move at all. Help! And it doesn't matter how much you struggle, you can't, uh, you can't get out of it. What's causing Paul to sink is the amount of stress that he's putting on it. The stress causes the sand and water to separate and down Paul goes. A dangerous situation. It's as though you're in a vice. You can't move at all. You can move your upper body around, but uh, there's, there's no way I was getting out of that mud, not without help. Luckily, help is on the way. Meet the Southport Lifeboat Mud Rescue Team. A group of five guys ready to step in and pull out the downright muddy. Usually the person who's in distress will obviously raise the alarm, shouting help, calling the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard will then pass the job on to the rescue team in the area. For this area, it's ourselves. Call received. They gear up and move out to find Paul, driving along the vast coastline. Probably take us 20, 25 minutes to get, to, to get on scene. We'll come out with two quad bikes first, initial search, but some of the time we won't know where the casualties are, so we'll also have people on foot. We can manage with two people doing the mud rescue, but ideally four makes the job a lot easier. Keith and his crew bring only what fits on two quads. Traveling light is critical on this terrain. Just approaching the casualty is like playing chicken with the ground below. When we turn up to the casualty, we don't run straight in and get ourselves stuck alongside them. We tend to stand off on a bit of firm ground, talk to the casualty, reassure them, make sure they're not moving too much, because if you keep moving, you're going to get yourself bogged down even further. It's hard not to panic, but getting bogged down only makes things worse. If they sink below the waist and into the chest, as the sand solidifies around them, it can put pressure onto the chest and obviously give them difficulty in breathing. He's only up to his waist, but that's still a lot to handle. Within a few minutes, you become exhausted because you physically can't move your feet. You would exhaust yourself very quickly if you, if you tried to dig yourself out. To put that in perspective, the amount of weight pushing on his legs is equivalent to that of a medium-sized car. Fortunately, his team has the perfect set of supplies to lighten the load. We have an inflatable raft that we can, you know, it has a set of hand ladders, if you like, that the casualty team can climb up. Once the ladder's in place, it's time for the crew to jump in. Keith starts with a concrete poker. It's actually made for building sites. It's inside is just a big vibration tool, and it, if you put it by the mud, it desolidifies it. And that seems to be working. It relieves all the pressure around your legs and your feet, and you can feel the sand and the mud is all is all released, so you can feel movement back in your, in your feet. While the poker does a great job of loosening the mud, they need to get further down below his feet, and for that, they need an air lance. We work it down to, the, to just below the feet, and then just basically open the valve. And what it does is it, it desolidifies all the mud down below, and it's, with the lads working as well, they're able to bring the person's limbs up. The air lance can go 1.5 meters below the surface, but after only five or six minutes, the team will run out of air pressure. So it's important to do it at just the right time. As Keith works away, the other crew members dig down with their hands to locate Paul's feet, freeing the mud behind them and helping him up one limb at a time. Just, just stay on there for a moment. Once he's out of the mud and on the raft, the quad pulls him to more solid ground, and the hard part is over. Now, he just needs to warm up. It's a good feeling to get to, to help somebody, because obviously they think they're in a really nasty, life-threatening situation, and you come along and you've got the equipment and the manpower, really, to be able to help them get them out. Gives you a bit of purpose.